Our next speaker this evening is Rosita Igoni. Rosita was born in Iran, but she fled with her family when she was only nine in 1984 because of religious persecution. She completed a BA Honors degree in political science at the University of Alberta and is currently in the field of public relations and communications. Please join me in giving a warm welcome to Rosita. Out of Katie, I, I don't think I'd be able to do what she did at 15, so that was pretty well done. Everyone's been speaking about what home means to them so far, and I'm going to tell you what it means when your home actually falls apart. So come on this journey. It's Iran. It is 1984 five years after the Islamic Revolution. Imagine, I am nine years old. I'm sitting in a classroom in my school with my friends, and my religious studies teacher asks everyone who is not Muslim to stand up and identify themselves. Four of us stand. She asks us what religion we are. Student one, Jewish. Student two, Jewish. Student three, Christian. Student four, that's me. I am a Baha'i, I say. She looks at the other three students and she tells them to sit down. I am the only one standing and I'm terrified. Everyone is staring at me. I can see her brows frowning and hatred is creeping into her eyes and she yells at me, Baha'i is not a religion of God. But it is, I say, naively. We believe that there's only one God. We believe in the unity of mankind. <coughs> we believe in the equality of men and women and world peace. She's really angry with me now. She grabs me by the arm, pushes me out of the classroom, takes me down to the office. She demands that the school call my father immediately and have him come and pick me up because as of now, I am officially expelled from school for proselytizing my faith. This was Iran after the Islamic Revolution in the 1980s. The crackdown on the Baha'i community was immense and torturous. My father, who was a high school mechanics teacher, and my mother, who was an advisor in the National Bank of Iran, were both fired from their jobs because they were Baha'is. My sister was five years old and she needed to start school. We weren't sure if she could. My great uncle, who served as a member of the national governing body of the Baha'i faith in Iran, was recently executed because he was a Baha'i. University students were banned from attending university. Because my father was an active member of the Baha'i community, we knew that his arrest was imminent. In addition, there was no work, no education, a prison sentence, and no future for any of us. So my parents decided that we needed to flee our home. Now at that time, the government of Iran would not issue passports to Baha'is. So we had to hire smugglers to take us by land over the border to Pakistan. Like today, smugglers do not come cheap. They decided to sell everything that we had from household items to the family car, and they scrounged up enough money to pay for the four of us to get over the border. I knew clearly that even though I was only nine, I was leaving home. My home was being uprooted from my grandparents, my family, my culture, my country. I remember crying when I was saying goodbye to everyone that I was going to see them again. Now the journey to Pakistan was long, exhausting and terrifying for a child. Uncertainties plagued us everywhere. We knew that guards could stop us at any time. We could be shot at, 
We could be arrested. We could even be killed. We traveled on backs of trucks and motorcycles in the middle of the night, not sure if we would be caught. We weren't even sure if our smugglers had any truthfulness to them, whether they were going to leave us stranded. The only thing we knew how to do was to pray and rely on God, and pray a lot we did. Thankfully, it turned out our smuggler was honest. Finally, we made it to Pakistan. And everything was good until I got deathly ill. Apparently, along the way, I had drunk some not good water. And I got so sick that my parents actually thought I was going to die. To this day, my father still cries when he tells this story. We presented ourselves at the UNHCR as refugees in Pakistan and applied to come to Canada. Thirteen months later, my family landed in Edmonton on September 18, 1985. Don't hold that against me. <laughs> Just last month, we celebrated 30 happy years of life in this country. Now, don't get me wrong. Living in Canada has had its difficulties. Going to school two days after you arrive without knowing one word of English. Having to navigate a whole new culture, people, country, society. These were all difficult. But knowing that I live in a country where I'm given the opportunity to go to school, to finish university, practice my faith, and have the freedom to say what is on my mind without fear, and know that my children will not have to endure what I endured, that is worth any hardship. And I will always be grateful to Canada for it. Canada will always be my physical home. But the fact remains that the situation for the Baha'is in Iran has not changed one bit. Students are still banned from universities, and the best and the brightest of the country are deprived of the right to an education. I have since traveled to many places around the world and lived in other places as well. But Canada will always be my physical home. This country provides me with familiarity and comfort. But in preparing for this talk, I came to realize that for me, home is not a physical place at all. My real home has always been, and will forever be, my faith. When at nine, my physical home was falling apart, my parents were in reality helping me protect my spiritual home. Looking back, I see that all these difficulties have drawn me closer to home. The Baha'i faith is where I turn when I need help, where I find purpose in my life, where I am the most fulfilled, where I find hope for the future and the world. And it's where I find absolute peace and serenity it's always with me in my heart. It's where I belong. Thank you.